In today's video, I break down my own gameplay for you. I cover a lot of big topics and fundamental things that you need to know in Rainbow Six Siege. I also beat myself up a little bit on the mistakes that I end up do making in this rank game. But without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. Uh, Alright, no, 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 no. so right off the bat, I'm on my phone. Not a good thing. I've already wasted, let's see, 8 seconds that I could have been utilizing. And it's actually very important for an operator like Jaeger where I'm going to have to do a lot. Like put down 3 ADSs, two, like 2 barbed wire. So it's 5 pieces of utility and then reinforcements are usually 2. Like that's the courteous kind of uh, reinforcement etiquette. Like always putting down 2 reinforcements. They're going to bring it um, but yeah, like I could be utilizing the prep phase time a lot more efficiently here. And Do you put a Malusi on yellow? And uh and just utilizing it for my utility. So actually something that I don't really talk about, but something that I do personally that you guys can implement into your own gameplay is especially with like Jaegers or Veltcams, Maestros, Mute Jammers, like I could say any and all utility. But not necessarily because some utility is just universal in their positions. Um, but like kind of adjusting them based off the first round or the previous round of whenever you played this bomb site. So I'm just kind of doing universal placements of covering the hotspot areas that I know the attackers usually attack from. Just based off previous previous experience of playing this map. I kind of know where the attackers usually take from. So I'm just putting down uh, ADSs so that way no matter what. If it, they are, do like hit these hot spots, that the ADSs are there to support. But if we lose this round, which we do, I'm going to end up rotating my utility and kind of favoring it more towards where they attacked heavier last time. So that way my utility is benefiting more out of the round. Does that make sense? So just like adjustments like that. So I'll kind of start with like a like default positions. And then the next round, whenever we go to the same bomb site, I'll adjust it. And kind of rotate it around so that way it's more, uh, more beneficial for me and my team. And also, if you guys heard, I asked my teammate to put down a banshee on yellow because I understand if I look at this lineup, there's a potential of four p pe four pieces of barbed wire between the Aruni and I. But I know that she has bulletproof because I hit like spacebar, like pulled up my team's utility in the the like operator selection phase, like when you're loading in, you know. So I'm telling Malusi that to put a Banshee on yellow because I know where I'm putting my barbed wire at. So I'm just like trying to fill those positions so that way there's not a gap in like an attacker being able to just walk up a staircase or up a hallway or something without us knowing. Because that's really, really crucial information. So that's the reason I'm doing that. I don't know why I did this. My teammate just asked for me to put an ADS on bathroom window and I end up putting it in laundry. Like, I don't, I don't know why I did this. Like, this is just, like, me just simply not paying attention, which, not using it as an excuse, but I, like, I'm reading chat and, like, streaming at the same time, so my attention isn't solely devoted to, we need to get the grill wall. um, to the rank game. It should be, like, chat should be kind of secondary, especially when I'm in the round, because it'll always be there versus me just playing in general, you know? I'm going to win going for bunks. Yo, they didn't um, shoot really good habit to build is getting on default cams early, especially in ranked, because a lot of the times, like, people are just kind of zombie mode, like, autopilot until they figure out where the attackers are when they're on defense. Like, what, like, people just autopilot kind of run around waiting for the attackers to shoot, and then they're like, oh, I hear three people shooting in this direction, I'm gonna go there, so that way I can take gunfights and be a monkey or whatever. Um, and what do you actually hear me say I'm here? Outside. I hear in a moment, I believe. Push cam? E box cam like Nothing off wall, cam. Man. so I'm calling out e box cam like default cam outside. outside it's not actually called e box cam it's Yo, they fuel pump e box cam outside there. I'm calling it e box because like this room here through this soft wall that leads outside is called e box um, so I'm just like generalizing the default cam outside but the, uh, like what I'm calling here and the purpose of what I'm doing is to say like hey this default cam is outside is still up which indicates like okay no attacker spawned here so that will tell you where they're going to be attacking from, right? And always on any map, I believe Emerald Plains is the only map that doesn't have this for default cams for defenders. But all the default cams, out, outside default cams, will always be the last ones in the list. So you always flick to that side early round, to, you know, potentially catch some attackers rotating around the map and you might be able to get a little bit of, you know, early round information on what operators to 
expect and kind of adjust around. Uh, like if they have the Monty or like the Ying or something, um, just to prepare for stuff like that. But also, like I said, it tells you where the attackers are and are not. Um, so if they they're not in this position, then then they're then they're you know in other positions, especially 30 seconds into the round, like we are now. So getting into the habit of doing this, like checking default cams really early, especially the outside ones, if you are able to, is a really good habit and will kind of allow you to understand where you should be expecting the initial attack from the attackers themselves. Which cam? E-box cam, like... I think wall, man. Cam. Wall, maybe wall. Oh, yeah. They can't get back. They got them all. Yeah, one one drone grill side. So I called out yeah, one grill like, side. Um, whenever you see a grill, uh, <laughs> whenever you see a drone coming for, from a direction, as a defender, that usually indicates that an attacker is going to be pushing from that direction because they're not going to drone. It, like if an attacker is on one side of the map, they're not going to drone the opposite side of the map to them. Like, you always drone from you, or you should always drone from you outwards. Because, you know, the closer you get the information to you, the, you know, the easier it is for you to react off of and play off of and things like that. So, usually when a drone comes to you from an area, you should kind of be expecting an attacker or multiple from the opposite direction of wherever you are from. Does that make sense? And since I, you know, I have previous Bro? experience of just playing this map and kind of understanding how the attacks go, um, I'm expecting this person to be grow, which I was correct on, based off where the drone came from. I hope that makes sense. We need to make sure they don't walk in dorms. So, if you saw there, I didn't, act, you know, answer the Doki B call, and the reason for that is two reasons. One, they know that we're going to be in the bomb site, so it doesn't really matter where the like if the attackers know that we're on the bomb site because they already know that we're, i mean we're defending right it does i know that they're not going to be attacking or in the bomb site because i know everything else is covered i have barbed wire in the game's door to my right i'm looking at the grill door here we have a banshee on yellow stairs that i asked for previously in the round if you guys remember that so there's audio cue there and also i have teammates playing in dorms and laundry so i know those areas are covered so every single area that the attackers can come from are being watched by either me, utility, or teammates based on their positioning. So that's why I don't answer the Doki B call because I know that no one's going to be in the bomb site unless we know. Does that make sense? Um, so the information of the Doki B call doesn't really matter because they already know we're going to be in the bomb site, therefore rendering it useless because they're not really playing off of the information. Um, and also, the other reason I, I did not answer the call is because I know someone is grill based off where the drone is, and also just you know, us fighting actively. Um, uh, here, I'm, I'm playing way too aggressive. Like, I'm just taking gunfights because I want to. Uh, like, there's no reason for me to be peeking the way that I am, uh, because I have utility supporting me in my position. Like, I'm just simply, like, bloodthirsty and just wanting to take gunfights here. Uh, what I should be doing in the most ideal situation is playing off of the Yaruni gate because I know this Finca opposes no threat to me in either walking in or grenading me. Uh, with it, with this Yaruni gate being there, I also have barbed wire on the door, so I have audio cue of that and slowing uh, her down in the ability to you know have the advantage there so I can just peek off of that information. Plus the Yaruni gate, and I also have my ADS there that is placed, so um, I also can't be naded because I have the ADS there too. So I have two layers of you know protection between nades and you know also two layers of walk-in information through that doorway oh, girl, girl, so, girl. so i'm just simply playing way too aggressive there i should not be playing the way that i am um and it you know ultimately did make me uh or end up uh punishing me i'm gonna walk in girl right side girl door you can flank you need, you need to flank malusi nading left side door malusi you need, we need to go in. Yeah, I'm trying to call the Malusi here. Like, I understand the situation that we're in. Um, a 3v4, they already have dorms breach open. They got that open in the first minute of the round, which is not good at all. Like, getting the the attackers getting breach control and pressure like that super early in the round is really, really beneficial for them, and I understand that. So that's why I'm calling, like, we need to flank. We need to alleviate some pressure. And I'm trying to communicate that to the Malusi, oh. which I don't think what? she really understood like, the no, severity no. of you it. Need flank. You, need, you need to flank Malusi. Like, I'm telling her, like, she's walking up um, to the door. 
And, like, I'm telling her, like, you need to be at the door, like, yesterday to kill this guy because we need to do something, especially with the Sayana. Also eliminating, I believe, the Thunderbird, if I'm not mistaken. Um, like, I'm, I'm trying to communicate and stress to my teammates, hey, we need to kill some people or else we're going to lose a round, pretty much. And, you know, that just wasn't relayed all, all that door, well. We'll see. We, need, we need to kill him. Like, she stutter steps and, and things like that, so. Yeah, we need to be faster. All friendlies have been yeah, neutralized. We, if, need, I need you to run below. We don't need you to run below. Um... Also, I don't know why they got preemed like that. I don't know if he hurt him or what, but there's a grenade going off right next to him, Secure so I don't know how he hurt him if he did. Uh, same thing here with the ADSs too. Like I'm just generically putting, or I'm putting down generic ADSs rather. And then I believe later on in the VOD, you'll see me kind of adjust the ADS positions based off, um, you know, previous information and just adjustment to what the attackers have done previously. So if you guys want like good outback ADSs, I mean these are pretty decent. Uh, these are like pretty generic ones, like that you could utilize and then just adjustments, like I said previously. Uh, adjusting rather. We need holes for like shark side. Uh, so the barb that I'm placing here is actually for if you guys have played outback. Um, you'll often t often see at times like some sort of holes on this wall here uh, and that kind of allows you uh, two angles uh, one is to the shark stairs which, which sometimes an attacker does try to walk up uh, to get shark stairs control um, and also it allows you to peek top shark itself to like grill door so can we get holes in the uh, like the top shark wall when I'm trying to walk up I'm trying to ask for that from the, from the Aruni or Mew. One's outside phone. Uh, I try to I try to go put Barb there. Outside, outside garage the windows. Area. Um, just for like information on the walk up. There's already a Banshee there, so I adjust that and place it on the next choke point, which is usually what I you want to do with like the Lucy's or a barbed wire. Is just putting it at choke points and like playing around with how the map is engineered uh, and utilizing it that way. Garage windows, Maving, Evox. So I'm calling out what I hear outside. and see. And right now what I'm thinking so actively okay, is okay. Uh, a few things. So I'm kind of understanding how many people are on this side of the map, which again, you know, based off what I said previously of like default cam positions and like what are shot and what isn't shot. Um, that kind of tells you where they're going to be initiating their attack from and just a large majority of the attackers are and what you should be expecting in areas. And also here I'm holding a very tight angle on the window because I understand that I have the advantage of already holding the pixel angle and the uh, attackers have to peek into me. So I'm at a very um, elevated um, position, I, or a point of, uh, and a very elevated position and advantage, I guess you could say if that's like good wording. I'm in a good position to hold this angle because I, they have to peek into me. Um, and here in just a moment, an attacker actually tries to vault or... through the window. I think it's the Ion. I don't know why. So now that now that I know that there's three over here, actually. That's Ion. Yeah. So the so bees outside garage right now. Uh, garage window. There again, I'm playing over aggressive. There's no reason for me to peek that. I can simply hold the same angle that I just killed the Ion on, uh, just because it is so advantageous for me. But. Again, I'm just getting bloodthirsty because I know that there's more uh, attackers over there. Um, and th it's just like, th there's no reason for me to breach. do what I just did there, pretty much. Running grill. I think one's going to come grill and then three garage side. So like I said previously, um, based off where drones are on the map and like where you see them, it's kind of where you should be expecting attackers, right? And since I know that Maverick um opened or helped ace open the breach so i know that that's two attackers over there and then i know that um i killed a, another attacker garage side was the ayana jumping in so i know that ace and mav are over garage side and then we see a drone just just a moment ago you know that i saw from default cam two more there um, and then maybe girl side um i'm yeah, expecting another uh, an attacker those. to be there so now that Dokabi had killed my, uh, I believe it was mute. Um, now that we, now, now we know for sure that Ace and Dokabi are garage side because Ace killed me like 15 seconds ago and Dokabi just killed me. Oh, There's three the, in grill and grill gonna take top shark and then Finca does end up taking top grill, which is our third and last attacker. So kind of 
based off where my teammates are dying, where I died, and also where I'm seeing drones allows me to predict and understand where the attackers are based off gun audio, like I said, where people are dying on my team, and also where I see drones. So it's indirectly giving me attacker positioning, or you could use this for, for defender positioning as well based off other utility and just where people are dying or whatever it might be. Um, so that's allowing me to understand general areas of where I should be expecting attackers and I'm relaying that information to my team. So two, two garage then top shark. Um, unfortunately, they don't really utilize the information to its fullest potential. What they should be doing here is utilizing the information, taking the 2v1 on the Finca top shark because they both have a 1v1 here and could potentially um, mess up the 2v2 uh, you know, garage side between the Doka B and the Ace and my last two teammates. Um, and also, with that being said, the garage side is a lot more of a choke point versus where this Fink is coming from because she can peek two doorways instead of one. Like, she can go office door here to my left just off the bulletproof cam and also go top shark to party door. Um, and she just has a lot more options and doesn't really need to... Uh, advance as much as Doka B and Ace do into the bomb site. So, um, yeah, I wish my teammates kind of understood the the understanding of why I'm calling the way that I am. But this is just something that, like, this is how I think, in the way that I approach situations. And unfortunately, both of them, you know, end up taking two completely different gunfights. It would have been much better for them to both take a two v one versus you know a one v two and then a one v one between the last three attackers, but. Uh, it's how the round played out, and, you know, it is what it is. Actually, I'm mistaken, so I forgot to open the first pick. Oh, uh, we, I, for, yeah. I forgot that we opened the uh, the, the e box door there. Yo, if they open it. Gunfights. So, as you saw there, I actually moved my ADS up to the door instead of on the boxes. Since the Finca did come there last time. Um, and I'm adjusting my barbed wire too, since I understand that we don't have a Malusi for the yellow stairs that I asked for last time that we went to the bomb site. So these small things ultimately change how you approach site setups and just prep phase in general. And small things like this can be the determining factor of winning or losing games. And this is something that I see all the time. Uh, sorry, a mistake that I see all the time with, you know, reviewing people's gameplay, um, my clients through my coaching, which is linked below if you guys are interested in that. I do have a coaching service. Um, is people don't adjust enough or at all in ranked or just a competitive environment. Like if you just do m small stuff like ADS is here, moving an ADS up, moving it back, changing a barbed wire placement. That's the difference maker some of the time in a game like Rainbow Six Siege. So just adjustments, it doesn't have to be anything drastic. It could, like I said, be one piece of utility placed a little bit differently in the same area. Changes rounds and games and whether you win or, win or lose them. Like, it's crazy. So just adjusting is something that I don't see enough and I wish people understood how important it actually is. So like you see here, I'm actually moving, um, we need this last one. I want to reinforce this. I'm actually moving an ADS, uh, where, where did I put my, put my ADS? So I put one ADS laundry or piano, sorry. And then I put one ADS, um, laundry. And then I put the third one in dorms, but this time I'm adjusting and I'm putting my third ADS in bathroom, um, for the bathroom window. I saw a drone here in the drone hole. I just watched it because I could, um, you know, and I'm shipping away at drone economy doing that. So, uh, like you saw the first round as well, I'm getting on cams a lot earlier. Yeah, Mav Ace. Um, because I have the luxury to do that because I didn't sit on my phone in the prep phase. So, what that allowed me to do is call out four to the five attackers. I called out Ayana, Mav, Ace, Dokabi. So, that's already a ton of information. And also, we understand where they're attacking from. We saw Ayana, Mav, and Ace spawn Gage. campsite side here in just a moment when I flip to the default cam. So as you see here, it might, it might be a little grainy on the on the footage here, but like we have a Maverick, we have an Ayana, and then we have an Ace uh, just beyond the Ayana there. So we understand that three out of the five attackers are here. So what do we know based off of the off of this information? 
of the previous round is they're most likely going to have a very similar attack um, compared to their first round attacking this bomb site. So we understand how to kind of adjust to that since we've already played it and uh, have, you know, one round repetition of what they've done before. Uh, and we can adjust to that and make sure that they don't win that second round on the same bomb site, right? And then we flip to the gas pump so spawn here in just a moment. And we Iana see uh, Dokubi over there. So we have a, a lot of information, even though we only know what four operators are on their positions. So six, six but do you see how that compounding effect really adds up? Mavving wall. Um, I'm expecting them to Mav wall, and I'm just playing that position pretty much until they do Mav it. And they're going to nade over wall um, to try to... Uh, get the ace charger. I'll try the 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 K off the wall. I'm pretty sure I die here to Iana to the Iana. Yeah, Iana's bottom yellow. Can make zero sound. This guy is below me and makes zero fucking sound. Cool. I'm just complaining there. One dead outside. Iana's gonna come yellow. One's right side bunks one dead. There, I'm pretty. I'm just complaining to make it like easier for my death. Um, in my, in my offense, uh, yeah, in, in my argument, I still think I should have he heard that guy. Um, even if he was crouch walking or not, like siege audio is terrible right now, but it doesn't change the fact that I got killed. So I'm just complaining to complain because it makes it easier for the death that I just had, but I still feel as if I should have killed that or heard that guy, no matter if I do end up killing him or not. I, I, Strongly feel like I, I should have. Um, you know, I give my call out and then I get on Below, games like a good gen, boy. Uh, games window and then grill door. So again, so can, based off what we know, off of information, we, I just saw a grenade come I'm from afraid, below uh, here in just a moment. Duck is outside. Um, yeah, whenever this nade comes through, I think right now. That's one on box window. Yep. We made it okay. So. I know that one is on games window because I see the tracers coming through this wall and also they just opened a huge chunk of that. Um, <clears throat> I know that one is below the Ayana because this grenade from below. And I know that one is outside uh, grill still because this Azami did not kill this person outside grill based off the MP5K showing up in the kill feed for the kill. And also my teammate just calling out one or that was someone outside of uh, dorms window. So I processed all of that information in like I don't know, like half a second, I guess. Hello. So, like, Hello. all this. Hello, uh, games window and then grill door. So, I call out the last three uh, positions of all three attackers. Uh, based off the grenade here, based off this person um, shooting through the gen wall, or the games wall, rather, and then uh, understanding that this person, grill, is still alive because the Azami has the uh 9 by 19 v vn or something like capcans smg and we saw that the mp5k showed up in the kill feed and not you know capcans gun so that tells me that the wamai well, um which is here ended up killing someone dorm side because i know where he's at and also he does call out where where he did kill that person so I call that where the last year attackers are based off that information so we can, I, I hope you guys are understanding like the yeah, process the of how i'm getting this information. And then below in grill, right side door, shot cam. So in grill, right side door, shot cam. Um, calling up basic information and positioning and also telling my teammates that, hey, uh, the person in grill shot cam. So we have no more information on that. So that's something that we now need to worry about. Uh, and like I said, sometimes this information is registered by my teammates. Um, this is just how I call out and like, there are certain ways to call it in the game where it's like, okay, Finca and Grill, uh, and then just kind of calling that out when, you know, updating regularly. But when someone shoots a cam, in my mind, when someone tells that to me, that registers in my mind like, okay, we no longer have information on this area. So we need to like put more in, uh, more attention to that. So that way that person just doesn't walk into the, the room. Uh, okay. Fortunately, I, I do I have Shark Cam though. though. Right side door nading, I believe. So. I'm calling out I have grill info because I just called out shot cam after I called someone out grill. Do, does that make sense? So like I'm reassuring my teammates that, hey, I still have grill information, but they did shoot the cam. Uh, because at this point, I didn't know that I had this cam to my advantage. So um, I was calling it out in the way where it's like, you know, I called out grill. No more information on that area. So you guys need to worry about it. That's how I process, you know, the call out, like I said. 
but I'm reassuring them and now allowing them to understand that hey, yeah, I do know. still have information on girl walking and girl door. Traded. What one v two? Um. So I, my this is a lot of information. I'm sorry if this like gets confusing. This is gonna be a super long episode, uh, like breakdown or whatever. But um, I'm calling out two v one, uh, traded. And the reason for this is sometimes, you know, that person doesn't understand that, like, you know, just because the their teammate didn't show up in the kill feed that they're still in a, they're, they're like in a 1v2 now. Because this Cade got injured in the in the trade of whoever he killed. Um, so if the Wamai doesn't catch that, I'm just calling that out and like double, like doubling down on it just in case he may have not understood that he's in a, in a, uh, in a 2v1 situation because that changes online. how he plays it out. Gotta figure that out. Get some healies. Could come up yellow. And grill door? And and piano. And piano. Hey, what games? Games and piano. Yeah. So I'm double uh, calling I'm what I'm 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 there's a lot of information. So I'm calling out the grill person walking in. I'm double calling so that way they both understand where the last two attackers are and how they can understand to position themselves. Like this is how I process calls information and things in my head. Um, like on just generic calls like this is why I call it the way that I do it's not just like oh I want to call it this way like there's a purpose behind the reason that I'm doing it this way um, and like the way that I'm structuring what I'm saying uh, so that way they understand and get the information a little bit faster uh, because I'm not calling out yellow I'm not calling out in operators in, in piano in piano I'm just calling out positions because the information is getting to them faster and then, games games and piano and then once my teammate calls out, I think one's in games, I'm going to trust that information. I'm always going to trust information over, like, I'm going to trust what my teammate says versus just, like, not trusting them at all. Does that make sense? So if he calls out one in games and he's calling that, then that means he's confident. I'm going to trust his confidence and his call. And I'm going to be like, okay, piano games then. Last two. That's all my teammates need to know. Then they position themselves around that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, 2v1? Just play together. Just play so... This is actually huge information here too. So even though Ayana and Dokubi are the only two spotted attackers that we know of, I know that this was a Finca that walked through the games door, or the, sorry, the piano door here just a moment ago, based off uniform, gun audio, and things like that, and also who attacked her previously. Like there's a lot of information stacking up that allows me to understand that that's a Finca. So even though I don't know who the last two attackers are based off the scoreboard bar here at the top, I still know who they are based off utility, operator, uh, uniform and you know gun audio and just that kind of information you see what I'm saying so if Dokubi is not dead it's a process of elimination okay it's Finca then so the last person's in games you see what I'm saying and I'm about to call that here in a moment I believe is in games my split? I don't believe I did call it either way um, I'm telling them just to get a crossfire in a 2v1 there's no reason you should lose that Unless you fuck up somehow as a defender. Like, you have to royally, you know, mess up. With, like, the picnic bench. I'm sorry. I, like, I love my own sarcasm sometimes. You know, I like being sarcastic. It's a nice, it's a nice uh, character trait, I think, of me. Um, but, like, I'm telling them, like, establish a crossfire. There's no reason you should lose a, a 2v1. Like, unless you mess up terribly as a defender. Can... I appreciate that. Thank you. You are an LMG. I'm guarding. Reloading! Decimo. Grill and piano are clear as of right now. They have a really top shark. Yeah, go to the games window and open that. I'll go and just and then I'll talk for you. Laundry is clear. I actually mess up here pretty bad. Um, so like me streaming, sometimes I don't pay full attention, like I said previously, and that's not really an excuse. It's just more of a choice, I guess. But I thought they were piano games or piano laundry. So that the reason I'm opening that window for that bomb site is because it adds pressure. You guys will like. You guys will not believe how much pressure opening one barricade does. So if we kind of break down the top floor, uh, like piano bomb site and all that good stuff. So if the, like if this is piano here, 
Um, here's the hallway from piano, you know, and like, here's the window that I'm on right now that leads outside. Right. And then like, here's top yellow stairs, whatever it is. And like these lines are top yellow right there. Bam. That's yellow. Here's dorms. And then here's laundry. Right. And then here's bathroom. Um, whatever, just like a very basic, uh, um, diagram, I guess you could say. So kind of just color coding these or, uh, na naming these Jesus. Um, so this window here, if we look at how you can play this bomb site, there's three lanes for rotating in and out and like common areas and things like that. So just me opening this one barricade that I open here in just a moment, that cuts off one of the two lanes. So now they're down to two out of three. Because most of the time, whenever you're defending and a barricade's open, like unless you have 100% accurate information on that person either rotating or just not being on that window anymore, like you're going to be a lot more cautious of an area if a barricade is open or not as a defender. Like I'm sure all of you guys feel that pressure. So you guys need to put yourself in that position of understanding that, hey, this is how I feel when a barricade is open towards me while I'm playing defense and how much pressure it adds to me. Even if someone's not playing it, it's still a thought in the back of your mind. And in turn, that takes up processing power from the defenders and will, you know, potentially take away more brain power that could be otherwise devoted to an actual task that's needed as a defender so that way they make the proper decision. So just taking away 2% of thought process of, you know, it being devoted to this window being open and them understanding that in the back of their mind versus going 100% towards, you know, another task of thought, um, that could potentially be the difference maker of you killing someone or not killing someone while they're playing defense. Does that make sense? That might be a terrible way to explain it. I hope that makes sense. But there's three lanes here, you know, and I just eliminated one because I opened one barricade. So understanding this, this concept is very, very important. And also I cut off a lane of rotation. Um, or I just said that, sorry. What, what I'm trying to say is I am taking up some of the processing power of them constantly thinking in the back of their mind, okay, this barricade's open, it's open, it's open. Uh, if that makes sense. I hope I explained that well. And it, it, like, Put the weight in the understanding of how important, you know, doing something like that so really open is, the even though it's super simple. Uh, like I said there as well, go open the garage windows. Don't play there, just open them. Again, opening the barricades changes how defenders play positions drastically. If one barricade is open, it's a difference maker of playing an entire room or half of it or quarter of it. So if you just go and open those barricades, unless until the defenders um like understand that no one's actually playing there and call your bluff then it's just free it's just free pressure as the attackers like it's just free pressure like why would you guys not want free pressure giving you more of an advantage as the attackers it doesn't make sense do you see what i'm saying like i really hope this is making sense because uh, i'm trying to explain it and break it down right I don't know as to stairs. why it's so important and just how free it really is okay uh, here I'm just doing basic droning, uh, like, on pink uh, a, a big common, uh, a ver sorry, a very common mistake that I see is, you know, through my coaching and things like that, again, link to that in the description. If you guys are wanting a VOD review like this here where I break down your gameplay exactly how I'm breaking my own down right now and help you guys improve, go check out the coaching. It's linked below to my Patreon. But um, what I see a lot of people struggle with is mid-round droning. So right now we're approaching the halfway mark of the round. We've gotten a large majority of our map control that's needed. We're pretty much neck, you know, up to the neck, up to the bomb site. And what a lot of people miss here is like they get this map control, and they don't understand the next step, and they just end up face checking and just you know trying to take gunfights and not really getting information. And they don't understand the in between of early round and late round where they go for site execute and plant, which which would be considered late round, right? And then early round would be like taking early map control, you know, the things that we did uh, early round, establishing flank drones and stuff like that. So a lot of people find this as a gray area where they don't understand. And just doing one thing of droning, you know, getting that information on utility, what the bomb site's looking like, what's, what's the player position looking like, where are the weak points that we can utilize as the attackers are all very crucial things that you need to get information on as the attackers do you see what i'm saying so if you struggle with that gay, gay area what the, if you struggle with that gray area of the round then just droning is a great way that can help you fix this simple mistake um and will oftentimes help you drastically get on uh, flank cams um 
uh, help you drastically with your success as the attackers. Uh, yeah. And there, I'm just making sure that the dead person is getting on cams because he did die early, and we have a zero. Yeah, and and what, what I told the zero to put down. I don't have top shark right now. I'm regenerating. I'm regenerating top shark. Default cam's still up there too. Top shark clear. There's a I reckon Jaeger yeah, yeah, tag. Bullets clear. One's playing on this side. So you saw me droning there again. I can, I can just nade games here, maybe. Um, I'm just trying to like get basic information on positioning and like where the weak points are. I'm nading. Jaeger's in party right now, so he's on the box. I miscalled there, by the way. I said games instead of party. So, open the wall, decimal, like far right. I can't, I can't. I'm out, I'm out. I can map it, maybe. Wow, so I, I'm I'm calling for that just for like. It's like the same concept of the barricade. Even though we don't play the hard breach hole or whatever, like just adding that pressure is very crucial because we have three reinforcements now uh, on this party wall, and then the far left is open with head holes. So we need to add some pressure towards the back side of this room, so that way, you know, we're not just all walking through the same doorway from where that finca is. In, you know, here, uh, like like the uh, the party door here, um, just at the end of that hallway. Like you, so we just need to add add pressure on a different angle, so that way it gives the, the defenders like two things to worry about or three, whatever it is. Just more pressure added to them, pretty much. So like a big wall? thing, more, like far right. I can't, I can't. I'm out, I'm a big out. thing with attacking in general is just adding pressure to the defenders, and not necessarily like not necessarily doing it to benefit you, but also understanding the concept of adding pressure to the defenders, so that way they make the mistake for you instead of you. Like, you force them to make the mistake. Does that make sense? Just by you adding pressure. I hope that does make sense. It might be like a little... I don't know. I, I hope I'm making sense because these concepts and just things that I'm going over right now are super fundamental and are difference makers of winning or losing games, especially on attack, the way that I'm breaking it down right now. And if you guys would like to see me break down more gameplay of the thought process of things that I'm calling or why I'm doing the certain things, like, let me know. Leaving a like on a video on the I video uh, really helps me understand that kind of stuff because just the feedback in general. So if you guys want to see me break down more of my gameplay, I know you guys have wanted it, you know, before. This is the first time that I've ever really done it. So yeah, if you guys are wanting more of it, just let me know by leaving a like or a comment or both on the on the video. It really does help out and let me know. No way, homie tries it the two times, right? So when I jumped out of that window there that I was pre-aiming, so I was just kind of holding that just in case he did. Just in case he does try to jump out again. So I'm checking my run out behind me because I'm expecting the defenders to get a... Guys, just relax and get some info. I can fight the vending guy. One is as well. Do you want me to smoke shower hooks? Who do we kill? Who do we kill? Do we know? Is it the vending? Is it the vending? That was the piano guy. One's yellow. Yellow stairs. Okay, listen. Vending machine still? Vending machine went yellow stairs. Vending machine went yellow stairs? On yellow stairs right now. No one's inside. No one's inside. I can go in there. I can't, I'm nading you. Guys, these though. comms are so cluttered. Like, <laughs> every time I play with these guys, they just talk and talk and don't listen. It's it's like such a common reoccurring issue. I was like, yellow walker, bro. Grill, grill, grill. It, it would be kind of convenient if, like, someone helped them and, like, tried to fix their mistakes. Like, yeah, that maybe did it for yeah, a living, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but that's kind of like my job. And they still don't listen. It's crazy. Yeah. This guy got thunderbirded right in front of me. So, um, what I did here is, since I knew that, or like once I knew the Oryx was on the other side of the map to my left, I knew that the last two defenders were over here because we were calling out one in games. And then I heard the Oryx jump up the hatch just to my left here in the corner. So that tells me that they're both over here. So I just jump in and take the gunfights. Um, just to add that pressure. Like, I could have just held the lane and the cross from the window, like I said previously, and cut cut that off. But um, hearing the orcs jump up, knowing that he's going to be vulnerable because he just jumped up the hatch, and then un also understanding that I have solid information on the other one as well, uh, yeah, led yeah, me yeah, to yeah. the decision that I made. Do I regret it? No, because it ended up working out. 
and you know I was confident in it. Yeah, picked up. Nice. Um, yeah, I thought it was. So yeah. What's up? Are you still in? Are you still in piano or bathroom? In piano or bathroom? I don't know where my camera is. I'm joining this. The, that, that was probably the killed the guy there. I got a, a melon. Oh, they're on piano cam. Dawn's is clear. Piano's clear. Yeah, but I just put a shield down. Uh, showers is clear. I'm checking your yellow. Laundry's clear. Check my yellow. Yeah, no one on yellow, sir. You can jump in. What about piano? Um, the girl. Games is clear. Piano's clear. Piano's clear. Piano's clear. So I'm just double checking with my droner and like, as an entry fragger, you usually should have a droner. He's droning you know actively in the areas that i'm going to be inserting myself into and since i didn't know what was clear and what wasn't clear i'm just double checking with him and making sure that like the information uh or like the places that i know i need clear are clear because i don't i didn't know before so i'm just like asking and getting reassurance because i didn't hear him the first time and that's always fine like never be afraid to ask if something's clear or not because You'd rather ask and have them double, like say the same thing twice versus you jumping in based off just assumption that, hey, this is clear, and then you get shot, right? So I'd always rather ask, and that's what I'm doing here is just getting reassurance so that way I don't make the mistake and uh, don't make the mistake and um, jump into an area and there's a different what are on flanks? Can you sit on flanks, Can I get a knee here? Where? Game's ball. Yeah. Wait, can, can we burn once? Can we burn once? Can you burn? Alibi close. I was asking for burn. What burn is is just like a flash for like an ADS or Womai. Because they brought Womai last round and they brought a uh, Jaeger every single round. So I don't want to throw a nade and just have it be eaten when that could have been avoided. So I'm asking for burn. Unfortunately, it came late. Um, I had to ask like three times. Can burn once? Can we burn once? Uh, can you burn? I asked twice and my teammate asked once, so we had to ask three times for one door, uh, which is unfortunate. That doesn't change the fact that I got killed here. I was face checking this angle uh, for the burn so that way no one could walk up the way that they, that they did. Unfortunately, she was after my angle already, like she was already in bowl by the time I was face checking this, um, which is unfortunate. So this isn't like, it's just kind of like uh, me being one step behind because the alibi was doing what I was trying to counter before I was in the position to counter it. Does that make sense? So that's just, like just how the situation played out. I'm just trying to get in front of that angle. Cause sight. Yeah, literally, 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 just literally all of you just take sight. Ah, uh, okay, this is, sight. this is crucial. So I'm doing my job. I died. Get on cams. Stop being a lazy fuck. All right, stop going on TikTok. Okay, Addison Ray is going to help you win ELO, all right? Lock it in. You want to get ELO? Stop complaining. Put your phone to the side, okay? Hey, I'm a good boy. I get on cam. was office side and then unknown. Probably office party. So I'm just calling out probably like generic information based off of experience. Oh, one flanking. Take sight. Take so I call it alibi flanking because I'm a good boy. I get on cams. You know who you are. You know who you are. Site. Alibi off site. It's a 4v1 on the bomb site. Once we know that, alibi is off site. If you lose a 4v1 on the bomb site, not only are you getting bomb site control, but you're also making the defender now be the attacker. Like, dude, come on. You always Take fight sight. the. Like, you, if you have an opportunity like this where it's like a 4v1, 5v2, 5v3, or whatever, and there's a defender off site or two off site, and there's only one person on site or two on site. You always fight the site guy. I don't care what you say. Unless you are literally on the other side of the map in Narnia. You know, all four, all five of you guys, like the last remaining attackers. There's no reason for you not to fight for site control. You, It's a numbers game. And you're getting the advantage that you want of being able to plant the, def plant the diffuser. And make the attackers come to you. Like, there's literally no reason for you not to take advantage of it. You located a bomb. So I just take sight. I'm, I'm telling yeah, literally, my literally all arms. of you just take like, sight. Look, look at my teammates, bro. Who, who's Finka? Is that Blink? Blink, if you're watching this, what are you doing? I know you're getting kill hungry. Nomad is sitting here like... I. When I'm telling them all to take sight, I literally mean all four of them. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't trust them to, to kill one person. Like, I don't trust two people to kill one person. Because I've played with these guys a lot and, like, they troll. Alright, I'm just going to put it simply. They troll. So... 
I'm a little wary of like a 3v1 on the bomb site or a 2v1. So I want all four of them to take bomb site control because I don't trust them to kill one person. Uh, so yeah. Tight. If I didn't have past experiences of, of things like this going wrong, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that way. But I do. Five shark info. Um. So yeah. But I have girl info blank. She's on me. She's in the bathroom. But I'm I'm just calling out like what I have on information. You know, a lane pretty much a lane of information, what we have and what we don't have, and that's the the end of the game there. So. That is, uh, that's a ranked game. A ton of information. I hope all of it made sense. With that being said, that is going to be the end of today's video. If you guys enjoyed it or learned anything new from it, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Like I mentioned previously in the video, I do have a coaching service. If you guys are on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, I can coach you and help you get better with anything that you struggle with. If you want to know more information, check out the Patreon link below in the description. I can guarantee you I can help you get better at Rainbow Six Siege. There's also links to all of my social media down below as well. Make sure you guys go check that out and follow me on my other platforms as well as my Twitch. But with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.